afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just bear with me just a moment. We're going to have a little technical difficulty here with Victor. So I'm just going to send them a fresh link. Bear with me. Stand by just one moment. Okay, Victor will be with us just a moment. So thank you very much for your patience and we'll be starting momentarily. Again, good afternoon, everyone. We'll be underway in just a moment. We're just waiting for Victor as we had a slight technical difficulty, so he will be joining us momentarily. And there he is. Good Hello. afternoon, Victor. How are you? Hey. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. I think we are. We have a, a nice crowd already on hand, so I think um, we are ready to rock and roll. Are you ready? I'm ready to go. How's everybody? Excellent. I hope everyone's doing fine. So right now, everyone is muted. I'm going to go through, uh, I guess, my usual... Um, uh, my usual, um, as, we, as we start off every webinar, I like to just go through and do housekeeping. That's the word I'm going to go to, looking for. Go through some housekeeping with everyone and uh, explain everyone how this platform works. Um, if any of you are new to using Zoom, um, we have some great features here. So uh, both Victor and myself will be the ones here front and center on the video and obviously steering the conversation. But if anyone has any questions at any time, uh, you do not have to wait until the end. We would be happy to answer them uh, as we are going through the uh, conversation here. So there are two ways to do that. One, you can either raise your hand. There is a button to raise your hand, or you can send a question through the Q&A. And if you want to say something uh, privately, you can send me a, a, through the chat as well. So. Um, three ways to connect with us while we are talking, and it's great to see everyone out there. I wanted to give a uh, just a shout out to Gina and Ron and to Gilberto and to Janet, uh, to Mara, and to everyone else who will be joining us on this afternoon, this Wednesday afternoon call. So uh, we're excited here today, and uh, I hope everyone is doing well, staying home, hopefully and remaining and keeping their social distance. It's uh, definitely a challenge. I had to go out of the house this morning to pick up something from the pharmacy. And so it's, you know, I don't know if any of you have been out, but it's definitely a, a very different scenario when you go out there today. For example, I was at CVS and when you just, even, you know, the cashiers now are all covered in plexiglass. Uh, there are stickers on the floor you know, telling people where to line up so they keep that proper, you know, six feet distance. So it's, you know, the world has changed quite drastically in, in just a very short period of time, but it seems like we're all making the necessary adjustments. And, you know, we are here. My kids are taking their classes online, just like we're doing Zoom here now. That is how my kids are doing their classes every day. And so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a unique time. So, um, again, I hope everyone's remaining healthy and uh, staying focused. I want to also just, again, thank everyone, really congratulate everyone for being here today and giving us the opportunity to introduce and talk with Victor Mifsud. Uh Victor is an incredible individual, and I'm going to uh, get back with him in just a few moments. I have a couple more things that I want to just discuss. 
So today we have Victor Mifsud. Uh, the purpose of this webinar, this conversation, this interview, however way you want to phrase it, the purpose is to be able to bring unique and talented individuals who are living with low vision and who have accomplished a lot over their short period of time uh, in this amazing world. So uh, Victor fits that criteria. And I felt that it would be a really good opportunity to bring Victor here to share some of his experiences, to share a lot of the work that he has done, the work that he is doing. And I think it's gonna be a great inspiration for everyone that is joining us. Victor has been on a tremendous journey and I'm just really excited to have him here today with us. So before I have Victor you know, start off you know, and, and give a, a, his intro and his background, because I want everyone to hear from, you know, from Victor himself, um, it's quite unique and interesting how I actually uh, connected with Victor. So it actually goes back uh, just a short period of time ago, only back into January. Uh, Victor, I don't know if you probably will remember this. I don't know if you know where I'm going with the story but it was on a Thursday night in January, mid-January, and it was on the eve of the Unblinded Conference in Secaucus, New Jersey. So some of you may already know what Unblinded is. If you don't, you'll be hearing more from me about Unblinded uh, in the coming days. And so Ben Fox, my good friend B. Fox, who was the uh, catalyst that put us together and the, what I, we were, I was, we were in on the, again, it was on the eve of Unblinded Conference. Um, and all of a sudden, Ben hands me a phone. He's like, hey, say hi to Victor, the blind filmmaker. And I'm like, okay, how are you, Victor, the blind filmmaker? Um, but the problem was that evening, Victor was trying to make his way to New York from Toronto. And they really, they asked me, he's like, Barry, you love aviation. How are we going to get Victor here? All the flights are canceling. There's bad weather coming through. Victor's in Toronto. We need to get him to New York. Uh, so my quick thinking was that we would have Victor come down to Buffalo and then fly from Buffalo um, the next morning. But unfortunately, the weather was you know, rapidly deteriorating in Toronto. So that did not work. So I am still waiting to have my first interaction, my face-to-face. -face. Well, we're face-to-face -face today, but my real face-to-face -face in person with Victor, and I'm, I'm pretty confident it's going to happen in the near future once this coronavirus pandemic is um, out of uh, everyone's way. So um, without further ado, uh, it's, it's my great honor to be able to bring Victor here to this platform today. Victor is a really an accomplished individual who is someone who is a DJ, an artist, a biohacker, filmmaker, traveler, dreamer. I don't want to say you name it, but I think that, that covers a, a nice amount of who you are. So without further ado, please welcome Victor Mifsud. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me, Barry. And uh, it's wonderful to be here. I'm uh, calling in from Toronto, Canada. And uh, it's sunny but cool. Uh, obviously, uh, spending most of the time inside uh, during this uh, situation. And um, yeah, it's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm happy to, to share with uh, what's going on, what I've been up to and where I want to go. So. Excellent. Well, we're, we're really happy. And we've had a, f a few more people have joined us. I just want to, before we get further into the meat of this conversation, um, I just want to, uh, again, go back to some of that housekeeping. If you would like to ask a question, you would like to join this pa as a panelist, raise your hand and I will bring you in. And uh, if you want to have your video on, that's great. If not, just the uh, audio is also just fine. And you can always send a QA and a um, through the questions. So go ahead. Sorry for that, Victor. So let's hear. So you're from Toronto, right? And I, I want to first hear about your sight loss. So I have retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, it's maybe most of you know what that uh, consists of. I was diagnosed with it at a young age, I think around nine years old, and I'm actually 41 now, I'll be 42 in September. And uh, it didn't affect my life too, too much, or my vision wasn't as bad in the sense where I was actually able to get a driver's license at 16. And that uh, didn't last very long because at 21, I lost my license. And, um, and that was a big kind of like wake up call 
for me. You know, I lost a lot of my independence and uh, was kind of struggling with that, that, that loss because I was driving to work and all this stuff. And I thought, you know, my vision was actually not as bad. And I was, you know, on top of my RP situation. And, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know what the symptoms of retinitis pigmentosa are, or in my case, it's uh, like a tunneling of the vision and, uh, you know, night blindness. So basically the tunnel almost shrinks even more so at night, kind of gets a little bit bigger during the day. I probably have about five to 8% vision. So that's what uh, retinitis pigmentosa is. And um, yeah, I've, I've had it for most of my life. And I was always told that, you know, nothing can be done about it. And you're just going to have to deal with this vision loss for the rest of your life. And that came with uh, a lot of challenges and, um, you know, trying to function in a, in a sighted world and trying to act, uh, you know, quote unquote, normal. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty hard on me, especially, you know, after losing a driver's license at, 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 uh, at that age and, you know, wanting to, to like have independence and, and have my own life kind of thing. So it was a real wake up call into adjusting to life with vision loss. And, you know, I struggled with a lot of that for, for quite a few years with, uh, you know, mental health issues and uh, all the things that come along with that, like being put on, you know, medications that didn't work and, um, and just not feeling great, not feeling happy with my life. And um, I didn't want that to be the case, but, you know, I, I didn't really know what to do. There was, there wasn't many options or, or, you know, ideas from, from other doctors to like, Oh, just do this and this, and then you'll be okay. But, you know, no matter what anybody said, it, it seemed to still be challenging and, and complicated. So, you know, fast forward 10 years till I was about, you know, till, till about 30 or so, uh, you know, my life still wasn't going where I wanted it to go to and just feeling like something had to change or something had to uh, give, so to speak. And, you know, then I started coming across a couple of books like uh, The Brain That Changes Itself by Dr. Norman Deutsch and um, Scattered Minds by Dr. Gabor Mate. It's kind of about the true origins of attention deficit disorder and a few other books, holistic vision books like uh, um, uh, this one, Better Eyesight Without Glasses. And there's another one too, it's called Take Off Your Glasses and See by Dr. Jacob Lieberman. So then I just was really reading about how intelligent our, our bodies are if, if they can heal and change, especially, you know, with the brain and with the, with the eyes and, and with, with trauma, emotional trauma. So, you know, just starting to read a lot of books and then um, starting to read about like learning disabilities, learning difficulties and, and how, you know, if, if put in the right environment that these things can, can change you know, and it kind of goes against the mainstream grain of like, oh, you're set with this brain and you're, you're, that's the way you are for the rest of your life, even when it comes to eyesight. So, right. Um, so that just got me on this big rabbit hole of researching and, and I've, I came across some really interesting information on, you know, I can empower myself a hell of a lot more than I thought I could to, to actually heal and, and, and to get, to get better. And, um, you know, over the years, I actually ended up uh, connecting with these authors and, and doctors and, and uh, you know, researchers and, uh, you know, working with them one-on-one -on -one and or them giving me some guidance, you know, and some inspiration. So with that, I, uh, you know, almost 10 years later, you know, like now and like a couple of years ago, and I decided to pitch this film of, of my my healing journey basically so it's a very personal film about uh me and how i just gained uh awareness about my vision condition and what effect it had on, on me my life my mental health and my overall health but it's more about you know just my 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 vision issue it's about like this holistic uh you know situation or or, or right like a way of being where we have to live to, to be well from our inner world and our outer world. So it, it's, it's, it's basically like a journey of all these different things I've tried 
and uh, people I've talked to, to, to find out how I can optimize my, my health inside and outside. So, you know, I, I finished, we finished the film uh, in 2000 and February, 2019, that's when it was released and it's been in some festivals and, uh, it's, uh, been in some conferences. It, it's been on uh, national television on Canada at the, at the AMI channel. And, um, we released two versions as a TV version, which is on the AMI channel. And we've released a, uh, a feature, um, a feature cut. So it's about 90, 72 minutes, or 92 minutes. Anyway, it's, it's a lot. I, I, I just want to, I want to, I want to jump in here. I'm sorry. Sorry to cut you off. Okay. Uh, but I have a couple questions for you. So first things that is the film is not, correct me if I'm wrong. The film is not yet available in the United States. Is that correct? Or is that inaccurate? It's not yet available. We uh, just recently picked up distribution by iTunes. So it's Congratulations. in the process of, uh, of coming out. We don't have an exact date. Things are slow right now because of uh, COVID-19. So iTunes doesn't have a lot of staff. So it's, it's still in the process of, 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 of being uh, available online. So uh, soon. So stay tuned for okay. it. Um, yeah. And, and, and what, yeah, I, we're, and, we're, and we're going to post the trailer um, on our Facebook page, on um, our Low Vision MD Facebook page. So um, we are, and in fact, it may already be posted already. It's supposed to be uh, that post with the trailer. It's called My Neuroplastic Adventure. And we're, and we're going to come back to that in just a second. I want, I want to go back for a second. First, can you tell everyone where your site is today? And, and also, I I'm, I'm want to also... We're going to post all those books that you've mentioned as well, because I think um, those books that you've mentioned, while I personally have not read those books, but they seem to provide you with a lot of inspiration and sort of maybe, you know, being the catalyst to getting you to this point of where you are today. So I want to hear where your site is today and, you know, where it's, you know, how much it's changed since you were first diagnosed. So if you can elaborate on that, I appreciate it. Well, sure. I mean, I, I used to wear, uh, I used to wear glasses for, uh, I mean, there's a couple of parts to vision, you know, there's your central vision, then there's your peripheral vision. Right. So because of the RP, my peripheral vision is, is compromised. And, um, but I also had issues with, uh, I mean, these are just blue blocking glasses. There no, there's no prescription in them right now. Um, so when I was reading about like holistic vision care in terms of wearing glasses, I, uh, like the Bates method, that book, I just showed you better eyesight without glasses and, and Lieberman's book, he kind of empowered me that, uh, and it's, it's, it's a real thing that, um, you can change your, your visual prescription, you know, through holistic types of, of vision care and vision exercises. Like, why is it that you're, you break your arm and you put a cast on and your body heals itself, but why is it when anything that comes to do the eyes, it's like, oh, you're, you're just screwed and don't bother changing and just wear these glasses for the rest of your life. But that's a, that's a, that's a very fascinating point. And I've never really heard anyone, you know, provide that comparison or analogies where if you break a, an, another a limb, a brick a limb in your body, where that ultimately will heal, why can't you know that change uh be in effect when it comes to your site so keep going yeah so um basically what i learned is there's a couple of things that are linked to like myopia so that's like the need for glasses and you know you, you having astigmatism and needing uh you know glasses to see clearly so there's a trauma element i think to to vision loss or to uh um, people needing glasses. So when, when the body's traumatized, the unconscious part of the body like doesn't want to see the trauma. So what does it do? It blurs it out. So hmm. that's, that's, that's a, another kind of t area of topic that I can get into. But the other when, thing when is, you, when you, when you say it actually blurs it out, are you talking about the actual sight loss or it's blurring it out in your, in, in your brain? So you're avoiding it. I mean, or is it both? I, I could see those as the same thing. Okay. You know, 
um, because your unconscious mind runs like 95% of your, your, your body and we're only right. 5% right now. So, I mean, that's what's making you breathe. That's what's making your thyroid gland function. That's why your, your eyes are blinking. All these systems are unconscious, but it goes, it goes in like a heck of a lot more in depth in terms of like what we see. There's like shape of the eye stuff too. And, you know, once you wear glasses for a long time, depends on the prescription of your glasses, especially if, if they have like astigmatism compensation, it actually doesn't allow the eye to, to change. It almost acts like a crutch. So if you do these eye exercises and then you're, you're trying to like lose weight, it's like trying to put the same pants on and they, and they still kind of keep you, prevent you from, you know, um, you know, fluctuating your, your vision back. So right. you need to work with like a holistic vision therapist to allow these a proper type of glasses to be worn for your eyes actually to change. Most people's glasses are, are end up being uh, too strong for them. And uh, it, there's ways to, 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 to get a, a proper pair of prescription glasses, which can allow for the eyes to change. And there's also exercises like there's this palming exercises, which relieve stress on the eyesight, there's like these motions where you kind of look up, down, left, right with your eyesight to, to again, it, your eyes are a muscle and most people are just staring straight. You know, it, it, it's like you need to go to the gym for your eyesight and nobody does right. that. Everyone's just staring at a screen. Also, what's very important too for eyesight, and that's what they say leads to a lot of stigmatisms is um, our ancestors were used to like looking, physically looking at things very, very, very far away. But if you are, were grown up in school, you're just looking at the book here and at the class, at the classroom chalkboard uh, under, you know, and I think uh, light spectrum is, is also a very important uh, aspect of, of eye health. And it's usually blo blocked by glasses or us living an indoor life existence. And often these light spectrums uh, don't hit our eye, which I, I, I I can say uh, contribute to uh, vision issues as well. I mean, I don't know if I'm making any sense with what I'm talking about. I'm, I know I'm covering a bit right now, sure. but uh, it, long story short, it's most definitely possible to, to correct uh, myopia. I mean, it takes a bit of work. You're not going to expect to go to the gym after uh, not going to the gym for ages and, and expect to change. But if you kind of learn that the eye and the brain is intelligent, and uh and it, it can in fact heal so but that's from a myopic perspective and you know from my retinitis pigmentosa perspective uh i've done a lot to to try and help increase the uh the visual fields uh, my eyes are pretty stable um i haven't seen any drastic drastic improvements as of yet for my visual field for my tunnel vision so um, that's what, what takes me into the next phase of, of my, of my research. Uh, okay. you know, so that's kind of where I am, you know, going to right now. And I've come across some pretty interesting things like stem cells and, 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 uh, and peptides. So. Yeah. The stem cell category is something that's, it's up and coming. And I have had some, uh, recent conversations on stem cells and, and I'm curious to see, where that goes, I think that there is going to be um, some great progress, I think, in, in, the, in the near term with stem cells. So uh, I'm actually uh, quite excited to learn more about that. And uh, hopefully, you know, there will be, you know, a cure for sight loss in, in the near future. So, um, you know, for me, I, I am super passionate when it comes to uh, sight loss. I, I literally eat, sleep and breathe, low vision and blindness. And, and I've had you know, the opportunity because of my background, I came from, you know, when I, before I got involved with low vision, I came from a completely different background. I, in fact, I used to work with the airlines on a, on a global basis. So I used to do a lot of traveling, work with a lot of different cultures, diversity. And so I've had the opportunity to see a lot as far as around the world. But what I'm proud of is that I've been able to connect with you, with, with you, Victor, and many others uh, in the sight loss community, again, who are very extremely talented, who have learned how to deal with their sight loss and how they've been able to really move forward with their career. And I think you, you're really a, a tremendous example to that. So 
I give you just a lot of credit for everything that you you have done and you continue to do. So um, I want to I want to ask a question here. What would you say like, like today? Uh, your number one hurdle is. I mean, do, do you find do you feel that you have any hurdles today? Of course I do. Yeah. Uh, and this is like you know pre pre Corona hurdles. Yeah, I got a lot of. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm a, uh, as a, you know, as a filmmaker or as an artist, you know, it's been, uh, I, I'm still having a bit of a difficult time with, uh, you know, uh, meaningful employment as an artist. I don't know if that's the right word. You know, I have some potential projects on the, on the go for the, excuse me, for the uh for the future but obviously now with this c19 stuff it's a little uh up in the air so that just flared up a lot more uncertainty and anxieties in terms of like how i'm gonna make ends meet and uh where does where do i see myself going with my career you know right. what what i like doing you know i like uh educating people with vision loss on how to optimize what they have and how to change their health. So I, I do some, I do coaching, uh, okay. online coaching, um, for this, but you know, I'm still trying to, uh, make it, I've been pushing my, my film. It's an independent film and, uh, we didn't, we had a small production company, so we we're trying to get it seen. There's a lot of content these days and, and, you know, trying to, trying to get this, uh, seen sure. has been a, a bit of a challenge, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, struggling in that sense where I can uh, really, um, you know, with like financial independence. Is this, okay. you know, I've had some projects here and there, but I really haven't taken it yet to, you know, the next level. If, if you know, if we're being honest in terms of where I am right now, sure. I think absolutely, that, and that's and that's what I think is has has been driving me for a while too, and that's kind of what started me on my on on this healing journey as well is because i've had quite a few uh employment situations in the past where uh it didn't work out or i was working for this company and they didn't accommodate my my vision needs and you right. know it's and, you know the sight loss community is is like one of the highest uh unemployed so correct Correct, so, and, and and that's why and that's why I, I want I felt it's important to highlight your work, even though you and and I I know this that you're not you know you're not employed full time and I think perhaps and I can't speak for everyone here who's on on this you know joining us today but I think today a lot of people are no longer full time employed it's you know definitely challenging times and and I'm I'm certain that things will ultimately you know return to where they were and and things will get better uh, so you know I'm hopeful that. You know, by doing this webinar together with us today, um, getting some additional exposure and, and you know, I don't, I don't want to go into specifics here, but we've had conversations with other individuals on where things may be going as far as projects in the future. Maybe Victor coming to Baltimore for a period of time. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot on the table right now, obviously just a lot of uncertainty, you know, with COVID-19. But let's put COVID-19 aside. And I want to go in, I mean, I want to, you know, you, you know, you're a DJ, right? What type, I'm just curious, what's your, what type of music do you prefer? What's your favorite genre of music? Well, I, I, I play a lot of like vintage stuff. So it depends on what night that I uh, put on, you know, sometimes I do these like uh, rock and roll parties. So I'm, you know, playing like 50s, 60s music, rock and right. roll. I would do like uh, other dance parties that are a little more world music where it's still like a vintage vibe, but like right. reggae, like Brazilian, uh, like African music. So it's, it's okay. not like a, uh, you know, like a, a, an electronic DJ. I have, I collect a lot of records and uh, that's kind of been my, my taste is a lot of the, I don't know if you call it retro, but you know, 50s, 60s, uh, from, from, you know, various places around the world. So right. that's kind of been my, my vibe. And I have a lot of records for that. So I, I play with records and things, but, you know, but do I you do actually it. go out and, and perform as a DJ. Yeah. 
Nice. Yes, it's been, a, it's been, a, I mean, everything's kind of closed down now, but, uh, of course, you know, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we spotlight uh, it in my documentary. I talk about how I became a DJ and why I became a DJ, you know, as, as I'd, I'd loved, I loved going out and listening to music, but since I'm night blind, I'd, uh, um, it's very difficult to navigate these crowds. So, you know, I just right. like standing in one place, my ears work really well. So I'd always be listening to what the DJ is doing. Like, Oh man, like I can totally do this. I mean, I know what I would play next and you know, I know how to make people like dance for certain songs. Right. Uh, and then I thought I could do it. And then, you know, I just started collecting records and then, you know, I teamed up with a buddy of mine and we just started planning these DJ nights and, you know, we had a uh, quite a few parties uh, that were a lot of fun. So, I'm just curious. Do you have equipment in your house right now, as far as the DJ all that mixing and all that all that stuff? I'm, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. Um, how cool would it be to host a live concert or a live DJ, a live mix, a dance club uh, night here That'd with the great. crowd? I, I will, we'll, we'll talk f- further more about that. But I think that's something that would be unique, and I think that especially today. Um, I think that would be fascinating to see and to really, you know, highlight some of your talents. So um, let's go back and talk about your documentary. So uh, it's called My Neuroplastic Adventure. And when, I want to know here, when, when did you actually start filming for that? I think we, uh, we started filming in January. Oh, so, uh, I think. January 2018. January 2018. Yeah. And how, how long was the actual, you know, filming from start to finish? The actual uh, film. Well, not, the ed- is... not the editing, but the actual filming. I think, geez, I'm trying to remember now. Um, we, we ended up, we had a tight schedule, so everything was planned out. It's, it's not like other documentaries where they just shoot tons and tons and tons and then build the story in the editing. Since it was a bit structured, you know, we, right. we had, a, uh, we had a, a, a writer who used to work for uh, uh, one of David Suzuki's show with us. Uh, we had a pretty decent production team, which, which done a lot of TV stuff. So it was planned. You know, there was a lot of like, a, there was basically like a the script on how we wanted it to unfold. So we had shooting schedules and it took in total, I think we probably spent about, uh, you know, four months shooting, not like four months right. every day, but there were like some long days and maybe four or five months that, uh, it consisted. And if you see from the documentary, a lot of it was done, you know, in the winter because of what I'm wearing my like winter coat and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice winter coat. You can see that in the trailer. Every time I look at that, I warm up. I love that one up for <laughs> so, um, so this particular film is more of a documentary about you, about your life and, and your uh, achievements and your, as far as overall living with sight loss. But what have you in the past, as far as, because you actually like to film yourself as far as, as a filmmaker and a, if you want to call it a producer, correct? Mm-hmm. So what do you like to film where do you see it? I mean, do you have any uh, open projects right now? Is there something that your, your, your heart is set on as far as going out and filming something specific? Is there, you know, like, what's, what's, your, what's your ultimate film that you want to produce? Well, right now, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about what I'm kind of doing. I'm, I'm still honestly on a quest to, uh, to, cure my vision to like, like have, you know, normal vision. I don't want to use the normal word, but I mean, I'm, I'd like to see if I could reverse my retinitis pigmentosa. So, and at the same time, I'm still, you know, focusing on some other health issues that I have, uh, right. you know, like some cognitive stuff, you know, trying to turn my brain on focus more and, uh, some immune system stuff too. So, um, I mean, the biohacking world, I'm sure, I don't, I'm not sure if a lot of people know what the whole biohacking world is. Just, I, I want to get, we, we, I would like to, we'll get to that in a few minutes. I, I, want, I want you to share about the biohacking because I'm intrigued by it. And I think everyone listening today um, will be intrigued by it as well. And uh, so, so continue on. So um, basically, I want to do a, uh, 
I want to do a sequel to this documentary and uh, pitch it as like a docu series, kind of like an Anthony Bourdain esque uh, traveling uh, health optimization film, in, in in the sense where I would try these different modalities. To, that's that's whether for my my vision or or other uh, health issues that I'm that I'm dealing with and other types of you know different therapies that that are alternative and are showing like great promise like psychedelic therapy for trauma is is is, is getting pretty uh, popular right now um, you know there's other things like uh, there's other types of, of of therapies and other things that I've learned along the way that a lot of people aren't really looking at. Um, and I think a lot of these things that uh, I am looking into are, are seemingly invisible to the eye, um, where, where these, these different alternate, al alternative health hacks, uh, they, they rest in, in things that we can't necessarily see. I mean, from an right. emotional perspective, we can't see our emotions, but we know they exist. Right. Um, there's other things like uh, in, in the realm of quantum biology, um, which has a, has a bigger, uh, higher up effect on our health, like circadian rhythm health, uh, how, how important uh, light is for our health. We're often taught to fear the sun, um, but you know, if the sun has been around for thousands and thousands of years, why all of a sudden like, do we have to be scared of it? And, right. and, and I think we learn how to use it and harness its energy properly. It's, it's a major healer. And, um, and, and, you know, nowadays we're bombarded with a lot of technology and living an indoor life existence that, you know, this technology, you know, like our cell phones and our, our, our computers running on these wireless networks, we can't see our Wi-Fi router, but, you know, from a lot of the research I've been uncovering that the Wi-Fi and, and our, our cell phones aren't that healthy for us. I mean, sure you've heard like, oh, do, do cell phones give you cancer or people with cell phones getting cancer? Like, you know, it's, 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 it's very real. And there's a lot of evidence stating that it really does. And, um, and not to mention also the, the light that's emitting from these devices is a very, very high uh, blue. Right. That, uh, I'm sure, you know, these, these glasses and you've seen like your, the iPhones have this night shift mode. I'm like, why are they on there? Because again, the, 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 this blue light frequency has a, has a tremendous impact on our circadian health. So the blue light signal, if you're looking at it, when the sun is down, you're tricking your eye clock into thinking that it's, it's daytime. So it doesn't release melatonin. So I, I, I want you to repeat that because that is something that's so important what you just said, you just repeat that. So basically to explain, your eye runs on a clock. So from the moment you wake up to, to the, like, and during the day, and then when the sun goes down, our eye for, for thousands and thousands of years was used to the only light source was outside or a fireplace. So for thousands of years, this, clock, this eye clock, which has a tremendous effect on the releasing of, of uh, serotonin, melatonin, and all these other uh, hormone systems, they actually get signaled by natural cycles of light. So for example, if you wake up first thing in the morning and you check your phone, that's on right. full brightness and blue, you're tricking your eye clock and telling it that it's noon. Because the only time the color temperature from your phone, that bright blue is ever going to be that blue is at noon time. So one right away, you're, you're throwing off your clock. And then prime example, I mean, you know, those, those sad lights, if you've seen those sad lights, they're all like a blue, that those are great to have during the day because you're, you're telling right. your, your eye clock that, hey, it's, it's, it's bright, it's blue, it's, it's noon, and, you know, you need to, blue light, like, wakes you up and releases these other type of hormones. But when the sun goes down, your eye clock is not supposed to look at any blue light signal. But you look at your laptop, you look at your phone, you look at LED lighting, these spectrums, if you look on a spectrometer, the spectrometer is not a, a balanced rainbow. It's a high white and blue. So these right. orange signals to the eye clock have never been around before. So it's leading to cataracts. It's leading to uh, vision loss if, and for, for people who, who aren't uh, vision compromised. 
So we're going to see a major acceleration in, in vision issues in the future because of this technology, you know? So we need to entrain our, our eye clock to mimic what's going on in our outdoor environment, because this is like an ancestral way of living because this system is so old and so uh, in in intelligent that has been screwed up because a lot of people are unaware that this issue with the technology has a major impact on, on our health. Correct. So, and, and again, these are very fascinating points. We're not here to scare anyone or God forbid or anything like that. But, you know, I, I feel that because Victor has a lot of knowledge in this particular category, I felt that it would be worthwhile to have him share it. So I, I, I appreciate that. Um, and I, you know, I know, uh, well, first of all, and guys, I'm coming to you from New York today and Victor's in Toronto. Um, yeah. It's nice and sunny here and it appears to be nice and sunny in Toronto. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I have the shades on. You see, it's, you, have the sh you have the shades open. I have my shades open here as well in my temporary office that I set up here in my den. And uh, the reason why I have a temporary office is because I want to be closer to that Wi-Fi router so we would have a nice, strong connection. So, yeah, I have, I, since we started talking, I am very, well, here at home, I've really made sure that I keep my uh, shades open here in the house, sort of from where I'm working from. Normally in Baltimore, um, I don't think that when we moved to our new office uh, about a year and a half ago, I don't think there's been a day that I've actually pulled down the shades in my office. I keep my shades open in my office 24 seven. And, and I happen to enjoy that. And, and, and it's, it's just really important. You can, you can, first I'll let you talk about the vitamin D aspect of that. Prime example. And I think it actually, uh, it can actually tie into a bit of what's going on with the, with the virus. I mean, look at when this virus is coming out. Um, and we all know that we all need optimal immune systems to help beat this virus. And what, what a lot of people don't know about, uh, like vitamin, I'm sure you've all heard about vitamin D. It's actually a hormone. Um, right. and, it's, and it's created by light. And uh, what a lot of people don't realize that depends on what latitude you are, anything north of the 37th parallel, which I think is like um, from maybe Northern California all the way up from a period in the winter time, maybe from around end of September to April, the, uh, the, that part of the, the sun spectrum, the UVB part of the sun spectrum actually doesn't even release any vitamin D because we're so high up latitude wise. So and plus everybody's inside because it's too cold. Right. Uh, so the majority of us are, are vitamin D deficient and uh, vitamin D is responsible for geez, thou like thousands of immune system processes and, and other, you know, mental health uh, processes as well. So right. It's, it's, it's really important to, to test, to see where your vitamin D levels are at and to optimize your vitamin D levels. So, um, because it, it, your immune system depends on it. So, right. uh, you know, supplementing with vitamin D and K2 is, is, is better than nothing. I, I personally don't like to supplement with vitamin D. I like getting vitamin D from light sources. So I actually, it's just beside me here. I use a, I have these special lights where I expose myself to, um, it's a vitamin D lamp. So for five minutes a day, I expose myself to this light signal that our bodies, our ancestors were used to getting. I mean, do you think we were born with these clothes on? So our ancestors no. were, wherever they were equatorial, didn't have any clothes. So we were allowed to get these full, spectrums of light, mainly in the purple section and in the red section, which are, uh, are, are beneficial and, and received from sun. So again, it, it's this ancestral connection to nature. And ultimately, I think um, uh, our, our health depends on our connection to nature. And once you kind of realize how to connect to nature, you can see a major turnaround in, in, in health. And we're living yeah. in a very uh, technological indoor existence, especially now. So 
I, and, I, and, I, and I don't think it's beneficial to uh, human health. I, I hear you Adam clear and, and you know as you know is you know what we put in our bodies as far as the food that we eat um, I, listen I'm not perfect but I will tell you that I have adapted to a fruit until noon lifestyle and that means that I only eat fruit along with a coffee or my tea uh, depending on what day it is but I will only eat fruit till noon so if when I wake up let's say after 6 a.m. or 5 30 a.m. until 12 o'clock I am only eating fruit. And, and I personally have been doing this for probably a little over three and a half years now. And it's made a significant impact, A, in my productivity, and just as far as my ability to really, you know, have that energy level take me all the way through, uh, even into the evening, just by having fruit until noon every day. I don't know if you, it's something that you've ever tried, um, but if anyone out there, um, I highly recommend it. Feel free to, you know, reach out to me directly to further discuss that. But again, you know, we're talking about all this, you know, the vitamin D, the food that we eat, you know, our, all these environmental factors definitely play a role when it comes to our overall health. And of course, obviously, um, with our eyesight. So yeah, these are uh, just I mean, great, great, you know, nuggets, if we want to call it, and, and, and pieces of information that I feel are so critical. And I really appreciate you sharing that today with everyone yeah, so uh, sorry go ahead no so go ahead so i mean you mentioned you know obviously vitamin d you're in toronto obviously um it's further up north so and i know you like to travel i was, in, you... mexico. I was in mexico before this stuff hit the fan and i was out in the sun every day i used to wear this is another thing which might be controversial to to people on here but i i i have a sunglasses collection I, I don't wear sunglasses anymore. I switched to blocking junk light and allowing my eyes to receive natural light. I know it's a big change for people to wrap their head around that, but I, you know, I don't squint anymore. My eyes have completely adapted and I don't, you know, I, I'm just saying what I've done, it was an experiment. I mean, like I said, my eyes were always covered up in sunglasses. I, and now I'm only I I, I I block junk light, and I uh, and I, you know, and I allow natural light in my eyesight. So that's another radical shift. I never thought I would do that or could do that, but I've been sunglasses list now for almost three three years. And if you look at all these older pictures of me, I was always 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 wearing sunglasses. So again, it's this. Uh, reversal and, and 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 train of thought to, to to try and live how a bit of how our ancestors were living and it's made a huge difference in 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 my health and you know it might be a little tricky to, for, for some people to wrap their head around but it's really about you know empowering yourself uh on and and basically saying like your body's capable of so much more if you give it the right environment it's, it's very difficult to get well in the same environment you got sick in. And once you realize what environment actually means, there's some magic that can happen to healing. And a lot of these things in the environment, we can't see, which going blind taught me how to see these things. Sorry, I can't hear you, Barry. You're muted a little bit. Are you, are you there? Uh, I can hear you now. Sorry, but I accidentally hit mute, so I apologize about that. Um, what I was saying is that because of your sight loss, you have taken the time and the energy and the resources to do all this investigative work. And, and, I, and I will say that it, it's working for you. Um, I'm not a doctor. I don't think you're a doctor, but I know that you are living proof that you know, so a lot of these changes that you've implemented into your lifestyle, and this is all post sight loss, that have been able to be a, I think a, a, a really a, a driving force as far as, you know, to ensuring your success and, and your overall well-being. So I, 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 I think that's, uh, it, it's, a, it's just a fascinating piece. You don't hear too many people, you know, mentioning these topics 
Um, and so I think, I think that, that's, that's really uh, definitely a uh, fascinating well, piece. The biohacking world has blown up. I'm not sure if you've heard of like David Asbury. He started the Bulletproof Coffee. There's a lot of people. There's a big, big movement who are, who are uh, taking their health into their own hands. Like I'm sure we've all been to a doctor and uh, the doctor's like, oh, just take these pills or I don't know what's wrong with you or, and your symptoms are still there. Like why, why is that? Like what's going on? So, and I, and I was a victim of that too for a long time, chronic fatigue, brain fog issues, and nobody could give me a straight answer. So I'm like, I just got to do this myself. And then, you know, coming across these books and like, oh my God, my body's a hell of a lot more powerful than I was led to believe. So that's really what, how, you know, that's what I spotlight in, in my, in my documentary too. And, you know, so that's yeah. how I got here. That, that's great. And, and by the way, um, we're, we have a few more minutes here and I want to talk about another subject and we're going to try to wrap this up within the next 10 minutes. Um, again, everyone, thank you for participating today. It's been very, very uh, knowledgeable and, and I appreciate all sharing all this information with everyone. Uh, of course, I am happy to uh, put anyone in contact with Victor um, if they want to learn more and hear specifics as far as, you know, um, how Victor, you know, his routine per se and all that. Um, but I want to go back onto a topic that involves filmmaking, and it's something that we do. Uh, we have been we're doing these webinars, um, these live streams. But Victor is more as far, as far as you know making actual uh, videos production. And one thing that's really important today, especially for the sight loss community, is integrative descriptive video. Uh, IDV, Integrative Descriptive Video, and I want Victor to share with us uh, a few pieces of information. So for those, I'm going to, uh, I, I understand what Integrative um, Descriptive Video is, and we're going to be, you know, making, doing our best to provide that information as far as the actual any videos that we produce. Um, so Victor, go ahead and, and, and share your thoughts on that and, and give us a few uh you know tips as far as for those of you out there who are creating your own films whether it's whether it's on TikTok, you know facebook youtube wherever you like to create and post your videos give us some information um and tips on integrated descriptive videos okay so basically my my documentary was one of the first uh fully fully featured documentaries to incorporate uh idv and uh, it's different than DV or descriptive video. So descriptive video is usually put at the bottom of the uh, text to kind of explain what's going on or with, or with audio to explain kind of what's, what's going on. Um, so my, my film is fully accessible to the blind. And uh, what that means is we wrote in, into the documentary that like when I'm, every time I'm speaking, I'm not, I'm not saying like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm picking this and putting it there. So what I, what I just did was like, I, I sort of say that I'm picking up this box of toothpicks and placing it on my left hand side. So you don't need to see what I'm doing. I can, you can hear what I'm doing also. So everyone I've interviewed with, uh, we made sure that they were using this t technique that uh, that's been developed that's called integrated descriptive video that that basically you can watch the movie with your eyes closed or you can watch the movie by just completely listening to the movie only and know exactly what's going on from beginning to end so that's what IDV is so we've 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 put that in mind to the whole film so the whole film is fully accessible to the blind. So that, and that's one of the first documentaries that we know of that actually have incorporated this. And while we were going through creating the doc, we, uh, we made sure that it was, we had lessons in how to do IDV. And um, we, we talked to everyone who we interviewed to make sure. And we had a script super, uh, an IDV supervisor while we were shooting the whole thing to make sure it went because we had some mandates from the network as well that it needed to comply with this with this uh, mandate to make it fully accessible. So no one would have to also go in to, to type in these things to make it. So 
it's just all done in one in one go, so to speak. So, what, what, was it difficult for you, even though you have sight loss? Was it difficult for you to adapt to that? Not really. I mean, I, I I tend to speak that way all the time, and I'm sure you know from the blind community, people realize that like if they're asking for directions or they go into a store and then right. know, they they ask you ask them a question and they're like, yeah, it's over there. I'm like, like where's over where? Finger pointing and where's over there? Like like right. It it, it you know it kind of boggles my mind, and I think the world kind of needs to be IDV, you know, because it, it could just make it so much more accessible. So. You know, it's something to, to really look out for. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people just don't know, you know. So it, it's, it's, it's important to, like, either educate people that there's a, there's a possible different way of speaking to make it more accessible. Right. But it happens all the time to me. And, you know, I try not to take it. Uh, I don't take it too hard. But it's just one of those things of living with sight loss is, is, tends to be a big issue. But, um you know, what, uh, what I was going to say is considering, you know, like what's going on right now. And if, and if people, you know, are interested in watching the film that, uh, somehow, you know, I can, um, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, the first three people who comment on this, uh, Facebook live that want to see the film, um, you know, I can link a, uh, a private uh, password if anyone is interested. We can see how we can arrange that. I'm not 100% sure how we will arrange it, but I'll see what uh, we can do just as a okay. little uh, quarantine treat for people um, yeah. as the uh, release kind of comes into effect. If somebody's really, 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 really interested and, and wants to see it, we can see how I've, it goes. I, I've seen, uh, I, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but I've seen a significant portion and, and it is really uh, it's it's put together so professionally it's done really really well and i think it's it's an eye opener uh no pun intended <laughs> so uh yeah so um is there anyone out there that i'm gonna ask uh anyone anyone have any questions for victor uh let's see here uh, again if you have any questions or you want to join the conversation um feel free to raise your hand there's you can raise your hand the button, um, or if you want to click on the Q and A and send in a question, um, don't be shy. We both don't bite. We're a very relaxed atmosphere here, and you know, hopefully, you've been enjoying this uh, webinar and this live stream, and uh, being able to hear from Victor from a completely different angle, living what it's like living with sight loss, being a, a filmmaker, artist, DJ, and uh, you know, coach and uh, biohacker. So. Uh, Victor, I, I, I don't like to use the word jack of all trades because I don't, I don't, I feel that's, I don't want to say derogatory, but you've mastered so many different techniques and so many different, you know, professions, if you want to call it. And so I, to me, I'm just always impressed when I see that you're obviously a very talented individual. So I, again, just really kudos to you for, you know, being who you are, not letting the barrier of sight loss stop you or slow down your momentum. You seem to have really, you know, broken down the barrier because obviously at one point in time, you were trying to figure out how do you get past this as far as the site loss and you've adapted. And, and again, I think you're an inspiration to all. So again, really uh, congratulations to you for being successful. And, and I always say in life or even business, you can never give up. You always have to push forward. You always have to strive for more. And you mentioned, you know, as far as, in, you know, your title, your bio, as far as being a dreamer, you know, I, a cousin of mine oh, told me this a long time ago, and he said to me, Barry, he goes, if you dream small, you're going to achieve small, but if you're going to dream big, you're going to achieve big. And, and that's how I've always, you know, it's always been the back of my mind. So I'm sure uh, you, you feel the same way, Victor, you definitely, uh, you, you've accomplished a lot and very, you know, personally, very proud of you for the work that you're doing. And I want to thank you on behalf of the entire Silos community for the work that you're doing. And, uh, we're going to do everything on our part to help, uh, elevate the message and get, you know, obviously not just posting to the trailer, but we want to obviously get the message out there 
you know, healthy lifestyle really encourage that. Really, really important. Um, I think we've covered some really fascinating topics today, probably topics that no one ever expected to hear. So um, hope everyone, uh, you know, if, if you had any objections to it, you took it with a grain of salt. Uh, obviously, we're not here to tell you what to do in any way, but uh, I really feel that Victor has, you know, done enough research and is really proficient on these specific, you know, categories that I felt that it would be important for him to share. So again, I, I really appreciate it, your time for joining us, uh, and I appreciate everyone here for listening. Um, anything else that you want to share with us before I give our closing remarks? You know, just take everything with an open mind and, and do your research and, and question, question everything, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of information out there that's, that's pretty profound if you, if you look for it. And, you know, it might not, it, it, it might be a little different than what we were initially taught. And that's, that's what happened with me, you know, it went against a lot of things that I learned and thought and I was just like, oh, wow, interesting. So keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. So with, with that, um, we will uh, wind down this webinar, this live stream. Uh, I do want to mention that tomorrow, Thursday, April 2nd, we will be hosting Dave Steele, the blind poet. We're going from the blind filmmaker to the blind poet. And uh, I know that you are in contact with Dave as well. So I'm happy to say that our friend Dave Steele, the blind poet, will be with us tomorrow, 4 o'clock. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to have any new poetry, but uh, I'm sure he will definitely be reading poetry. Uh, and I know that you are one of his fans, so that's great. He inspired me to shave my beard. Well, ah, I, I trimmed it down. So, <laughs> so uh, yes, Dave uh, surprised us earlier this week and completely shaved his beard. Uh, he's, he actually decided to do that because of COVID-19 to uh, keep the germs, uh, eliminate germs. And um, so we have Dave Steele tomorrow, and we are going to post uh, shortly, by the end of the day today, we are going to post, uh, we have two exciting webinars scheduled for next week so far for Monday and Tuesday. On Monday, uh, we are going to have a live stream with my good friend, and I believe I can say he's a good friend of yours as well, with Sam Seavey from The Blind Life. We'll be here at 4 o'clock okay. Eastern. Yes, and uh, Sam uh, was hoping to maybe pop in today, but uh, I believe he was out filming or maybe indoors filming. So Sam will be with us, Sam CV from The Blind Life. Many of you know him, outstanding individual, great channel on YouTube, The Blind Life. Sam will be with us on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we are going to be hosting Iris Vision, uh, which is a wearable device uh, for individuals who have remaining sight. We could talk about that more on that webinar but we are going to be co-hosting together with Iris Vision on wearable technology, providing live demonstration and Q&A. So again, anyone, uh, before we go, if anyone has any questions, uh, please, now's the time to raise your hand, um, send in the last Q&A. Um, if no one has any questions, we'll do everything on our part to post everything as soon as possible. Uh, I want to, uh, you'll, Victor, you'll send me the, the book information. And uh, we look forward to hosting you again in the very near future. And I uh, wish everyone, uh, you know, help, everyone should be healthy and uh, stay safe. And we'll see you tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern with Dave Steele, the Blind Poet. Victor, thanks again for everything, for being a uh, part of this. And um, thanks for having me. It's, my, it's our greatest pleasure. So thanks so long. Be well. Take care, Victor. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye, guys.